Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have the indefinite integral of x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 2x plus 2 quantity squared dx. So pause the video, try it on your own first. I took the route of good old trig sub. I like trig sub. I know some of you have an aversion, but that's how I'm going to tackle this problem. So to begin, what I did was completed the square for the expression that's in the denominator being squared. So x squared minus 2x plus 2, if I break up that 2 into 1 plus 1, now this is a perfect square trinomial, so I can rewrite it as the quantity x minus 1 squared plus 1. So since we have a variable quantity squared plus a constant, then this calls for using a trig sub involving tangent. I'm going to let tangent theta equal x minus 1, the entire variable quantity that's being squared. Then we're going to go ahead, differentiate both sides. So secant squared theta d theta is going to equal 1 dx. Perfect. So now we're pretty much ready to rewrite this entire integral in terms of theta. The only thing that might be tricky for you is we have plain x squared plus 1. So what you have to do is come right here where we made our little trig sub and remind yourself that this means x is equal to tangent theta plus 1. So I'm going to come through and replace this x right here with tangent theta plus 1 and square the whole thing. All right, here we go. So we have integral tangent theta plus 1 squared, so this is my x basically, right? Plus 1, that's all up top in the numerator. Oh, Now looking at the denominator, remember we completed the square, so it became x minus 1 squared plus 1. This is just going to be tangent theta squared plus 1, and then all of that gets squared. So that's my new denominator, tan squared theta plus 1 squared. Good. And then what about dx? dx is all of this secant squared theta d theta. Lovely. Now we're just going to simplify. So multiply out the entire numerator. So it'll be tan squared theta plus 2 tan theta plus 1 plus 1, so plus 2 over. And then now here's where the beauty of trig sub comes in. We're going to use our Pythagorean identity replace tan squared theta plus 1 with secant squared theta, and then that gets squared. So now we have secant to the fourth theta, and then another secant squared theta d theta out here. We good? Okay, so hopefully you can see clearly at this step, this secant squared theta cancels. This just becomes plain old secant squared theta. And then now I'm going to simplify by rewriting everything in terms of sines and cosines. So tan squared theta is sine squared theta over cosine squared theta plus 2 tan theta, so just sine theta over cosine theta plus 2. And then instead of putting divided by secant squared theta, that's the same as multiplying by cosine squared theta, d theta. Then this will distribute. Distribute, distribute, distribute. And we have some lovely cancellation that occurs. So this is going to be sine squared theta plus only one cosine cancels. So 2 sine theta cosine theta plus 2 cosine squared theta d theta. Good. Now hopefully your eye goes straight to the fact that we've got a cosine squared and a sine squared. We actually have two of these. So I'm going to split them up into cosine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, right, since we have two of them. And sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is 1, so I'm just going to rewrite it like so. So we've got integral 1 plus 2 sine theta cosine theta plus now just 1 cosine squared theta d theta. Perfect. What to do from here? So just go term by term and ask yourself, can I take the antiderivative the way it's written? One, I certainly hope you can. This one, yes. You At first I was tempted, oh, should I rewrite this as sine 2 theta? But then the antiderivative involves cosine 2 theta. And because we're going to have to draw a triangle, I ended up just kind of mentally doing a u sub. So I left this one as is. It turned out cleaner. But you do you. See if you can get to the same simplified answer at the end. And then cosine squared theta, no. We need to replace it 
with 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. Okay, and then at this step, no, don't take the antiderivative just yet because we have like terms we can combine. We have 1 half plus 1, so that'll give me 3 halves, plus, just leave this, 2 sine theta, cosine theta, it's fine, plus 1 half cosine 2 theta, d theta. Are we okay? All right, good. Now we're going to take all our antiderivatives. So antiderivative of 3 halves would be 3 halves theta. The next term, this is where you can just do that little mental u sub. I would let u be sine theta, then du would be cosine theta d theta, which we have. So then you would just have antiderivative of 2u, which is going to be u squared. So this just becomes plus sine squared theta. Plus, and then antiderivative of 1 half cosine 2 theta, 1 fourth sine 2 theta plus c. Very good. So to get back to the original variable of the problem x, we need to draw a triangle. And remember, we had let uh, tangent theta equal x minus 1. So think of that as x minus 1 over 1. Draw a triangle where tangent of theta, so ratio of opposite over adjacent side is x minus 1. And then use the Pythagorean theorem, find the hypotenuse. It's going to be square root of x minus 1 squared plus 1 squared, right? But that simplifies to square root of x squared minus 2x plus 2. Okay, good. Now before we can go back to rewriting everything in terms of x, notice this is a triangle for theta, yet here we have sine of 2 theta. So we need to use our double angle identity so that everything in our antiderivative is in terms of theta. No two thetas allowed. I'm going to write it like this so you get ready for the triangle. So if I replace sine 2 theta with 2 sine theta cosine theta, the 2 and the 1 fourth will simplify to 1 half sine theta cosine theta plus c. Perfect. Okay, now let's use our triangle. So 3 halves theta, that's just going to be 3 halves. When you have the angle by itself, come back say, okay, who did I decide to use for the trig sub? Tan theta. So then theta is just going to be tan inverse of x minus 1 plus sine of theta squared. So sine of theta is ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. So we've got x minus 1 over radical x squared minus 2x plus 2 squared plus 1 half sine theta. So again, x minus 1 over rad x squared minus 2x plus 2 times cosine theta. That's adjacent, which is 1 over rad x squared minus 2x plus 2 plus c. All right. What I loved about this problem was there's quite a bit of cleaning up to go from here, and it simplifies so beautifully. So hang tight. So 3 halves tan inverse x minus 1 plus, I'm going to distribute this exponent now. So in the numerator, we'll have x squared minus 2x plus 1 over, no more radical, x squared minus 2x plus 2 plus, and then cleaning up here, this will just be x minus 1 over 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 2 plus c. And then notice these denominators are almost the same. I'm just going to multiply by 2 here and 2 up top. And then I can combine those two terms together. Ugh, everything's coming together so fabulously. So 3 halves tan inverse x minus 1 plus, you guys, I'm going to distribute the 2 and combine like terms simultaneously if you'll allow it. Okay, so it'll be 2x squared. This is going to give me minus 4x plus x, so that's minus 3x. And then I have plus 2 minus 1, so plus 1 plus c. And you might be saying, surely, Professor V, I'm going to box my answer. But hold on, hold on. Notice this rational expression is not bottom heavy. What does that mean? Well, if I perform long division, I'd get some constant 
plus a remainder. And that constant can get absorbed in the plus C and further simplify our answer. So we're not going to leave it. Oh, no. We are going to take this all the way. We didn't come this far just to come this far. So 2x squared minus 4x plus 4. Yep, we're doing polynomial long division. It won't take long, so don't be dramatic. Sometimes my students are like, oh, good. I'm like, it'll take one step, maybe two. All right, so 2x squared divided into 2x squared goes once. That's it. And then distribute the 1. So 2x squared minus 4x plus 4. Subtract that row from the 1 above. And then we're just going to have negative 3x plus 4x, so x, 1 minus 4 minus 3. That's the remainder, which tells me I can rewrite all of this. So keep that 3 halves, tan inverse, x minus 1. And then plus, now it becomes 1 plus the remainder over the divisor. And then you have plus c. So then, this is where it just all comes together so beautifully. The 1 and the plus c can be a new constant. So we'll just say c1 is c plus 1. And at long last, you guys, this is going to be the answer. We'll box. I know you've been waiting for it. Plus x minus 3 over, let me take the 2 out. Just class it up. 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 2 plus c1 voila box it with pride that was well deserved if it bugs you to end with c1 instead of c then you just call this c and then you go backwards and you call this guy c1 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 so that you can end with plus c but you know it doesn't really matter all right did you enjoy it if you took a different route let me know because I want to see how you ended up at the same thing at the end. We should all get to the same place. That's the beauty of math. And that's pretty much it. So don't forget to comment down below how you solved the problem. Let me know what math class you're taking right now. Or maybe you're off for the summer. Or maybe you're totally done with school. I'm always curious who my viewers are. And thank you guys so much for your support. I'll be back sooner than later with more content. If you need to review Trig Sub or anything, I have... Everything organized into playlists on my channel. So go to the Calc 2 Video Lectures playlist. That'll have all the integration techniques on it. And then you can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. Love you guys so much. Bye.